I'm Brian from iWire, and uh, we have an updated kit for you. We already make a wideband plug and play kit without gauge. You guys have been asking for it, so here's gonna be AEM wideband plug and play kit with gauge. So inside the box, you have your AEM gauge with two different bezel types, depending on what you want. Our plug and play kit for inside the engine bay that will connect to the part that will go inside the cabin. And the wiring from the gauge to the sensor itself, the sensor, and accessory add-on parts to help with the install. The most common question we get is, why would I pick a gauge versus a non-gauge version? Our general recommendation is that if you have a drive-by-wire car, so this is like an 08 STI, um, that those ECUs you can output the wideband gauge part of this direct to the access port. It will display it as an actual number. Cars like this, which is an 02 WX, so 02 to 05 WX, or if you have a JDM WX or STI in your 02 to 05 WX, um, or maybe a swapped RS with a WX engine, these would be great applications where a gauge comes into play. The reason is that the Cobb access port for the 16-bit ECU, so these are the cars that are attached to two-liter engines, don't have the capability for the custom feature to make the digital display on the access port read as a gauge. It's just the raw number. So it's great for data logging, and that's why we're gonna hook it up to the ECU but you'll probably want an actual gauge so you can see what it's doing live. So in this case, we're gonna do that for this two liter because we wanna see the physical gauge while we're driving, but also be able to data log it to the ECU so our tuner knows what's going on. So the first step, remove your intercooler. You probably could do this with the intercooler attached, but a lot easier just to take the intercooler off. So after we've gotten the intercooler off, the next step is to install the O2 sensor itself in the downpipe. As long as you have an aftermarket downpipe, most likely it will have a bung already installed. You need to make sure that wherever this wideband sensor is installed, it is before the catalytic converter. So the next step is to hook up the jumper harness for your new wideband to make it plug and play into the location where the rear O2 sensor used to be. We're going to eliminate the stock rear O2 sensor and put this in its place, but we're gonna cap the plug for the rear O2 just in case we need it later. So that's the stock rear O2. Take the rear O2 plug cap out of your hardware bag. Cavity plug so that it doesn't get moisture inside the connector so it will be safe for later. And we'll connect it on there. We'll come clean this up in a little bit. Now that we've done that, we can take our jumper harness, plug it into the original connector. We'll get these taken off so we can extend it. So what we're gonna do is run this plug underneath the brake booster into the cabin. From there, we'll hook it up to the wideband gauge kit. The factory link isn't really designed to come this far on the factory kit. So as part of this whole plug and play kit, we've made this longer so that everything reaches. So the next step is going to be to ground the ring terminal. This is a great spot. So now we're going to kind of get a, a sense of where we're going to route it. There are two ways on the O2 to O5s. You can do it through this grommet or there's one under the booster. I would have probably gone under the booster, but since Sam already had a uh, gauge coming through here, we're just gonna share this one. 
you'll notice that the kit comes depinned. Make sure that while the while this is happening, you don't turn the key on, the battery is disconnected because you don't want to touch power and ground, you'll short circuit it. Um, once everything is put to run through to the other side, then we can put the, the connector back on. That way we don't have to cut a giant hole in the grommet as we do this. So wires through first, then we'll pin it and we'll show you how to do that. Now we're gonna pull it through, but we can actually do this inside the engine bay. One way to do this pretty easily, just match up colors, they'll all match. The blue is an exception, it's empty. You'll see there's a cavity plug in there. This is for a serial output. You won't likely use it, but we leave it in there just in case. So easiest thing to do. The other thing you can also do is go by pin order. There's actually numbers here and numbers on the other side, they do match and we'll put a little screen up so that you can see the pin order just in case. But simplest thing to do is just match it up. The thing to do here too is to get them started and thread them all together in at the same time is gonna be a lot easier than trying to go one by one. and then push them in until you hear it click. And you can pull on them and it won't come out the back. See that one came out, so it's not quite seated. There we go. Got it all seated. You can see now, there's one that kind of is stuck over to the side. That's pretty normal. Uh, you can take a little pick tool or something, just a little screwdriver and just kind of push it over. We're gonna put the lock in last, so. Just need to make sure it's centered enough to get the lock in. The lock will do the rest of the work. There you go. Now we can take this plug, thread it to the inside, and we'll come back to it in a little bit. Put in enough that you can, you can easily find it. We won't fully seat this and zip tie the engine bay together until we're done on the inside first. So, just a quick recap, we've threaded our O2 sensor in, we've hooked up the rear O2 sensor plug to our AM wideband sub harness, grounded it, threaded it through, and put the connector in on the other side. Now we're gonna drop in the actual connector for the wideband itself. Same process as before, whatever hole that you have, either under here or under the booster, we can repurpose so to get the other plug in, we're just gonna open up the hole just a little bit, only, only as much as you need. Um, scissors or cutters like these will be perfect. Less is more when it comes to this kind of stuff. Wanna make sure it's still nicely sealed when we're all done. As I'm pushing that through, I'm definitely pushing as hard as it needs to be, but nothing else, because the last thing you want to do is break this connector. Can't really replace it. So we'll pull enough through. Same thing, plumb it through into the cabin, give it n plenty of length so we can work with it. Most likely we'll put the excess in the uh, cabin instead of the engine bay, just for a cleaner look. And then same thing. Kind of unwrap it. Get a general sense of where we're going to put it. But once again, don't finalize anything until we get the interior sorted. There you go, something like that. And then we'll come through and zip tie it at the end. Push the grommet back into place.
Now that we're inside the car, your hat turns backwards because it's time to get serious. Routing will depend on where you want to put the gauge. That is completely up to you. You can get a gauge pod for your A pillar. Uh, you can get a gauge pod for your steering column. You could put a single pod up on the window or the dash, and you can do a clock replacement triple gauge pod. Sam had three here. He didn't like the middle one, so we're going to replace the middle one with our AEM wideband. We're going to leave them black to kind of match the best we can. And then the really this really all that needs to happen here is get it to where it needs to go and then we're going to secure it out of the way so that you don't accidentally kick it it doesn't get stuck on a brake pedal or a clutch pedal or something and just make sure that it's securely tucked away so in this case uh, given the way it's set up it's probably easier actually to drop it down than it is to try to pull it up so that's what I'm gonna do here Now I can plug it back in. So that's one. Plenty of room, lots of slack to go wherever you want. And now I'm going to pull up the other ones as well. This one will actually have to go up. Choice here. I'm just pulling a little more slack from the engine bay. A little trick you can do here, now we've got plenty of slack, is actually Take one of the ties, secure it down, and then use the other one to pull it up. That should work. Just like that, I have a cable. We're installing it now. It has a little bracket that will pinch the back of the bezel and sandwich itself on the pod. So to make it easier, because the plug is on the top side, we're gonna plug it in first, and then we'll finish the install on the bezel. Feed these through. You can see there's two halves. This side's gonna be the smaller plug, and this side's the larger plug. Slide it in there. Installing these, remember this is all plastic. You don't need to over tighten anything. Just nice finger tight is good. So the last step is going to be to do some cleanup. I would suggest that for this, we're going to pull most of the slack in the upper piece. There's plenty of room up here and we'll use the zip ties that we have to pull it that way. And then we'll also check underneath where the pedals are and it comes through to make sure nothing's hooked up there or tight or gonna get stuck or stepped on or pinched. Um, and we'll just clean up the zip ties as long as it's out of the way and safe. That's pretty much all there is in the cabin side. And then we'll do the same in the engine bay.
I'm just watching the the travel of the pedal. There's a rod on the this side so that it makes sure it doesn't hit the wires that we ran because it's kind of close. Just double check the brake pedal, gas pedal, nothing's touching, nothing's gonna fall. Last thing you want is to try to hit your brakes and the uh, wire doesn't let you. So now we're just gonna take the excess wire, loop it up, make it nice. thing to note as you're installing this is that we want all the excess inside the cabin keep your engine bay looking nice there's plenty of places to hide it under the dash so we'll take advantage of that So the final step is to contact your local tuner. They need to set you up with a specific map for this change so that the access port and the ECU can understand what's happening. If not, you're going to throw a code for the rear O2 and some other issues. So make sure you contact your tuner before you drive the car. But we'll show you on this one how it works. So turn the key, gauge is going to turn on. Perfect, that would be the number we'd expect to see. Now the one thing to note is that when you turn it off, it's gonna stay on for about 15 seconds. The reason is we're using the power for the rear O2, which ties into the main relay. The ECU controls that, and the ECU takes about 15 seconds before it turns it off. So this is gonna stay on for about 10 to 15 seconds. That's okay, it's normal, it will turn off.